The price of oil has had a tough go so far in 2012, and that's had a negative impact on a lot of Canadian equity funds. But that situation turned around in July. With me to talk about this is Morningstar Canada fund analyst Sarkhan Alte. Sarkhan, thanks for being here. Okay. Now, what exactly happened in July? What, uh, what caused this turnaround? Well, Christian, it was all about Europe. Uh, you know, we hear about Europe uh, you know, every month. You know, policymakers say one thing, politicians say another. But what made last month very significant was the type of language that was used from, from the ECB president, uh, Mario Draghi. He said uh, that the ECB was prepared to do, you know, quote, whatever it takes to, to preserve the, uh, the, the common currency. And that had a very significant effect on bond yields uh, and equity markets as well. Uh, a lot of asset classes uh, reacted very positively to that. Uh, what we saw was uh, a flight towards dollar-denominated assets, uh, which is why the price of gold also rose. Uh, and that was on, on euro strength, so people were trying to move into uh, an asset that would shield them from dollar weakness. So gold was one of them, and of course uh, oil as well. And what made it significant for oil was that it was on a three-month uh, decline. Um, and again, another reason for that was because uh, investors were predicting low inventory levels in the U.S., which drove up the price for the month. And of course, higher oil prices usually means higher good performance for Canadian equity funds. We saw in, in the month of July, the Canadian equity categories were, were some of the best performers, uh, particularly the small caps. We saw returns in the range of 1.1 to 1.3% for the month for the, uh, the Morningstar fund indices that measure these, uh, these categories. Other winners also included the, uh, the Canadian large caps, the, the Canadian equity funds, uh, Canadian dividend and income. Um, all, all of them had positive returns. But the, the one category that was at the top is, uh, is an interesting story. It's uh, real estate equity with a 3.1% return. Now, that's, that's a category we've, we've been seeing pop up there quite a few times over the past, uh, past year or so. That's right. I mean, the fundamentals still remain the same. We've seen a lot of uh, equity issues come to the market uh, from real estate companies. Uh, and again, uh, investors are still hungry for yield. And, and the yield on these new equity issues are anything north of, uh, of 4%. Um, and, you know, cap rates are still low and occupancy rates are still high as well. So real estate still remains an attractive option, REITs in particular. And at the bottom of the performance table, we saw, unfortunately, a lot of foreign equity, uh, foreign equity categories. All of them had negative returns. We're not talking about devastating losses, but uh, in the range of 0.3 to 1% for most of them. Uh, particularly hard hit were the Asian equities. Uh, Greater China equity category was down 1.2%, and Japanese equity was down 4.3%. That's right. What last month proved was that uh, no region uh, is safe from a declining eurozone. And because Asian uh, economies are export-oriented, uh, they're feeling the pinch very strongly, namely you know, China, Korea, and Japan. Now, what happened in China was uh, manufacturing data came in weaker than expected um, for, the, for the third month in a row. And uh, this exacerbated the situation because uh, Beijing had recently reduced interest rates in order to spur demand, to get banks to lend uh, and, and to, to boost local demand. But that clearly hasn't been the case. Uh, and the Premier came up with some very strong statements that, uh, you know, the, the economy is going through a difficult time and that uh, they need to do whatever it takes. Uh, what also happened there was, you know, if you look at the Australian Manufacturers Index, which is a good gauge of, of Chinese demand, uh, because China is their biggest customer, uh, was at a three-year low. So again, uh, those data actually brought down the, the Hang Seng Index significantly uh, for the month. Uh, in, in Japan, it was a mixed bag. Again, industrial production data was, uh, was at an all-time, was at a very low. Um, but again, what happened there was the yen is also still very strong. It's been continuing. It's been the, the best performing uh, currency over the last three months, rallied very strongly against uh, the dollar. Uh, but again, investors are suspecting that uh, Japan's going to post a big trade deficit. Uh, and also that, uh, that was negative for the Nikkei for the month. Thank you very much. It's very interesting. And for more, uh, for more information on Morningstar's survey of fund performance for the month of July, including a full table of all the fund index returns, please click on the link right below the video player. And check back with us regularly for more news and updates.